right, we are going to move into our community demo from eCare. So I will hand it over to you, sir. He's joining us from Barcelona and on a bank holiday, I should mention. So thank you for putting in the work, even when you should be on vacation. Uh, no worries about that. Um, can you see my screen? Can you hear me well? Yes and yes. Perfect. So uh, I'm the best song. Um, Tom, how to say, uh, corporate slides, but I, because it's Friday afternoon for me, then it's a little bit of fun moment. And I'm, after this, I probably will have beer and not coffee. Sorry for that, for the rest. You need to wait a couple of hours in the West Coast for that to happen. So first of all, uh, my name is Iker, like email, not like iPhone. So <laughs> it's Iker. Uh, I'm father of twins. I was a data engineer in the past, then I was an enabler, and now I'm a product lead at Adevinta. So now I don't know how to code or how to change time in Docker anymore. Sorry about that. Forgot all of this. Uh, but what is this Adevinta anyway? Wait. So Adevinta is a marketplace specialist. So we have many marketplaces around the, uh, around the globe, around the world. Uh, and we have different verticals, different digital brands. And uh, we try to create perfect matches on the world's most trusted marketplaces. This is the, the, the fancy title we use for Adevinta. So that's what we try to do. If you need a car, go to Adevinta's marketplaces and you will find your car, your house, your job, uh, a new pair of sneakers, whatever you want. Right? Uh, many, many brands around the world, many, many <laughs> marketplaces, different uh, teams, different offices. And since last summer, or since this summer, actually, we bought uh, eBay, Classifies Group. I see usually you have an eBay uh, t-shirt, but this is from the other eBay, the Classifies Group, which means we have even more and more marketplaces now, more and more teams. And you will see later how this is a challenging scenario for a data catalog, if you are not guessing already. Uh, if we look at the world map, this is more of like this. Um, I'm as uh, <laughs> As you mentioned, I'm in Barcelona right, right now. So just in the middle of the screen, as you can see. So this data catalog thing, what's, what's all of this about? What, why do we need a data catalog anymore or anyway, right? Um, this is more or less our product. We call it the data highway. Um, and it's basically a composite of many, many managed Kafka's that we manage for, for our clients, for our tenants. Uh, which are all these marketplaces and some central operation groups. And we also have data sets in data lakes and something we call FMDQ, which is filter map dispatch and quality, which is how we move data around from one Kafka to the other, from one Kafka to the data lake or from one Kafka to anywhere you, that you need it actually. Then we have a, an inventory of assets that we need to maintain all of this running. And then we have something that is called data hub. But this is not your data hub. This was before <laughs> data hub was public. We used this name, we decided on this. It was a cool one and suddenly someone decided to copy it. So let's call it for the purpose of this chat because it's already confusing inside Adevinta. So the, the governance UI, okay? Let's call it governance UI. <laughs> okay, why, what do we use this the data inventory for? Like the one we have today. So we need to self-serve the manage, uh, we need to self-serve manage the authentication or the authorization in data sets. So we cannot control uh, the authorization for all these data sets that we own from different marketplaces. The marketplaces need to give access to this uh, because we are like five people or, or 10 people in the team. And there are many, many data sets, as you will see. Um, so we have done this self-serve custom made, and this means that yeah, people need to control this. To control this, we need a list of data sets. We also need to comply with regulations. If anyone is in Europe, you will know about GDPR. So yes, we need to delete private data. We need to extract private data. And for this, we need to have an inventory of data sets. The inventory of data sets is actually part of the law. And then to manage of the Kafka topics we have, if anyone is working with, with Kafka, as you are, <laughs> you will see that the topics it themselves, they, they don't have any metadata. They, you cannot store this metadata in Kafka. You need to store it somewhere else, like LinkedIn data, for example. And at the moment, we are doing this in, in Atlas. And I will talk about this a little bit later. And then now another thing that happens, we need to link like one asset with one Athena table, for example, to give permissions. We give it to the underlying data set. A little bit of lineage here, we need to manage it. For this, an inventory is good enough. So you can relax, 
sit back and enjoy my coffee. The problem is that we have users, and these users are quite demanding, right? So, so they want lineage, they want documentation, they want glossary, they want dashboards, they want full text search, and all these fancy stuff. Like, I want, I want health scores on the data set, and I want community saying this is a good data set, this is a bad data set. Like, are you serious? Like, this is like my kids coming here and asking me to play with them. Like, I don't have time for this. But actually, I have, that's part of my job, but it's a little bit, uh, you know. It's a little bit overwhelming. So we said, cool, yes. Um, but what happens is we have, I mean, a lot of data and a lot of flows of data moving around. So an inventor is, over, is not good enough anymore. We, we need to change. And there is a tool for this, which is called a data catalog, right? So which tools are out there that can fit this and are better designed for this purpose? And LinkedIn data, LinkedIn data Hub is one of these, right? or Data Hub for, for now. So we, we said we need a real architecture. Right. And on top of this, remember, we have many, many tenants, many marketplaces, and someone said, hey, we need to do a global data catalog, and we need to do it like data mess. I hope, I mean, I don't know if you are doing data mess, but everyone talks about data mess. No one knows how to do data mess, but everyone talks about data mess, right? So, we have now suddenly Levoqua, Subito, the Spanish marketplaces, Belarus, Austria, all of them coming. And probably soon we will have also the eBay parts in Canada, South Africa coming also to say, hey, take my data, I want, to, I want it to be in a data catalog. So in order to tackle this, this problem, we said, okay, let's divide and conquer. And we, we split it, what is the LinkedIn data hub or the data hub architecture into three batch much. Um, on one side, we have the ingestion part, which is how do we put data or metadata and lineage inside the tool. On the other one is like, how do we manage this infrastructure so it scales, so it grows, so it's stable, so it can be um, accessed from different places. And the third part, which is the one in the, the API and the integrations part, which is the acting part, like how can we make whatever, whatever happens in, in Data Hub have a side effect or have some kind of effects and integrate with the, uh, with the rest of of our tooling because we have also as you might have guessed other tools apart from the data catalog. So we said, okay, let's let's do this uh, POCs, right? Uh, we did three with different uh, teams did uh, other POCs and in my team we did the one with LinkedIn Data Hub for our purpose uh, for our product. Sorry. And we said, okay, let's just start with some research on, on which alternatives are in the market. So we look at a couple of them. We already knew Atlas, we already knew our own. Uh, we have some people looking at third parties and we were quite interested already. We were quite biased towards LinkedIn, to the, towards the LinkedIn data hub. So I have to say like, we already liked it from, from the media and from the blog post and so on. So we said, okay, let's, let's give it a try. And we find it in June that was really, uh, easy just to display data from these off the self connectors, right? So like having red shift data, having Athena data, it was like a couple of hours literally to, to see it in, in localhost and it's like, seriously, like <laughs> this is too easy. Um, and another thing that we discovered also quite, quite early was like the um, infrastructure maintenance cost of it compared to the one from Atlas that we have already for Kafka it was much more light, right? So it's like, okay, this is easier to operate. So during, from July to September, we have been working on this, okay, we divided the squad into two, on the connectors part and on the infrastructure or uh, serving part. On the connectors, we have kind of in production four of the self connectors. Uh, I will explain which ones. We made one custom connector, we, went, we made two, but one is more uh, mature. We have the production, uh, the infrastructure production ready with, with, a with a little bit of bad, but we have it production ready. And we did an MB MVP of the UI that I will explain later what's the problem with the UI. So now what we will do uh, until the end of the year is 
try to get more data origins, as we call with uh, external teams. So set up more connections from different marketplaces or so more deep gray, uh, more red shifts, more Athenas, more glues, maybe a snowflake, maybe something else. And do some kind of user research. Like, do you like this? Do you find it useful? Is it easy to make the connectors? From the tenant perspective, like they don't own the infrastructure, they just need to send the data and take value on the other side of the pipeline. On the ingestion part, we very quickly we, we will put a redshift of the self. And thanks to the big team, which give us the credentials to this because we don't own redshift, uh, we could put also Athena. Uh, we use the glue connector for Athena because it's more generic. But if anyone has a different opinion, please contact me in Slack and tell me the pluses and deltas because <laughs> I think glue is better, but uh, maybe you, you think differently. For Kafka, we, we run into a couple of challenges. Like we have the same topic in pre and pro. And if you just put the topic name, then there are some collisions there that we found in the, in the browse path. Uh, and what we have decided uh, already is that we will replace the Atlas solution regardless of the result of the POC, yeah, which is still running. We need to validate with users. So we will change it. For, uh, we, we will change Atlas for LinkedIn Data Hub because it's again easier to maintain on the infra side. We, we tested Okta because we need the, the list of users. And the next, we are already talking with people are more receive, uh, maybe Hive, maybe Snowflake, maybe BigQuery and, and see who is in for testing. So we depend a little bit on our colleagues. And the click is not clicking, so yeah. <laughs> um, and the custom connectors, again, I said we have an inventory of data sets. We need it to maintain access uh, and authentication. So we need to implement uh, and show this in the catalog. This is key for us. But because it's a custom solution, we need to do a custom connect. And it happens the same with this uh, filter map dispatch and quality lineage, which because it's custom, custom built, it needs a custom connect. We don't expect you to build a connector for ourselves, no worries. On the serving part, OK, we deploy this in Kubernetes. And again, kudos to the common platform team. We have uh, orchestra uh, the connectors orchestrated with uh, Helm charts, if I'm not wrong. Um, we are finalizing the monitoring and the alerting of these uh, things. Uh, as you also are improving this, as I, as you mentioned. Uh, the, the, the good thing that we found that I like, <laughs> that we like, is the meta metadata ingestion on top of Kafka, because it gives this possibility of get into the past of, okay, reset my consumer offset and reset all the all this data. And if the ingesting part is, is down for a while, then it can catch up uh, later. So that's a good architectural pattern we have pro, uh, tried in the past and that happily surprised us. So now the challenge will be to define how to make this multi-tenant. So one tenant doesn't break the other tenant's metadata, right? It's a couple of uh, a little bit of an interesting challenge to have. And the other one is the, the MVP, the, the UI. So I, I explained we did an MVP of the UI, which means like um, the research that we have done internally in the company, it says we already have too many UIs. So we have a, if we have the data catalog in a different part from the governance tool or from the machine learning platform or from the experimentation platform, it's already a, a bigger mess. So we are trying to consolidate all these tools into a more centralized UI. So don't make the problem worse by adding now a data catalog. And this is a challenge and this is a pity because the challenge is how to do something as good as the data hub UI <laughs> internally without rewriting all the components, right? So this is an interesting challenge. If you have a solution, please send, send it to us. But this is more or less what we are doing. And the reason is because we have these actionable things that we need to do in the data catalog. So for example, we, we can delete a data set which actually deletes the data set and the information of the data set. Or we can archive it, or we can add permissions. Uh, we can edit the metadata, and it stores it in the source of truth. So there are a couple of things here. We have uh, custom dashboards in data doc on, um, with statistics on which people, which tenants are sending data to this data set. So there are a couple of things here that we cannot replace, and that's why we, we are not using the, the UI for the moment, or we are not using the UI fully, but we might use uh, 
I don't know how the RIA components as much as we can, for example. Uh, the GraphQL queries, for example, are very useful to us, yes, yes, for real. And then the actionable part. So we, we will investigate how to do this with our own things, with our own Kafka, with our own um, S3 data sets, with the PI information we manage, with the rest of the tenants uh, that we need to wait at least until next year, probably a little bit more, because we are simply, we are not there yet. We are lacking governance and agreements to do so. And very quickly, because I'm not checking the time, Maggie, don't look at me. <laughs> uh, some findings so far in these three, three, four months, we have actually been uh, working here. It's like kudos to the community. Community. Like, well, there were a couple of names in, on that slide of contributors that you mentioned. Uh, so I'm, we are super happy of being able to contribute. Um, there is this 1,302 people, probably there are more now. Uh, the atmosphere in Slack is, is super good, response is, is great. There are a couple of hours of delay, but that's normal because of the, you know, you are sleeping when we are working, so that's okay. Um, and yeah, the development speed, new features are super fast, are very good, bugs are fixed very quickly, so super happy there. The other one is the architecture that matches what we want, so that's okay. Uh, simply, right? And then the, the main problem here, which uh, we already know, is, is independent from the tool. So our inventory, LinkedIn, data have custom solution, commercial solution. The problem is the same. Like, how do you fix multi-tenancy? How do you do it like the like data, the data mesh? Uh, what do you do when there is no metadata, no governance, and with the data quality? So I describe this as we can do the best tool in ever, but if you put something in, you will get something out, right? So, sorry, but it's what it is. And this, any tool cannot solve it. And if you make a tool that solves this, then you actually can charge a lot for this thing. So, summary, the future is quite promising. I'm quite convinced that um, we will use LinkedIn Data Hub for, for a while. Uh, even beyond the POC, we, we might end up using this for ourselves, for the things that are under our, our, under our own control. For the group level global catalog, we need to see because the, that decision doesn't depend on us. But at least for, for the moment and for 2022, I see a quite promising future and, and I see LinkedIn data have been used quite a lot. <laughs> 